This presentation is brought to you by Arizona State University's Julianne Wrigley Global Institute of Sustainability and a generous investment by Julianne Wrigley. <clears throat> Good morning. I had a question. You know, we talk about stakeholders and decision makers that affect the, affect the plan. And we talk about governments and we talk about uh, academia. And we talk about uh, corporations to some extent as well. And so my question is related to what role should corporations have? Because as you, you know, in noticing the, the first, you know, uh, commercials that you put up there and trying to create desires within each of us, uh, what role do corporations need to play in the fight for sustainability? And given the, the significant changes in the geopolitical landscape over the last 10 years and what's going to be forthcoming, you know, what risks are there and them being in the, you know, in the game at all as they, as they work in a more global way? <laughs> um, I think corporations, it would do them well to recognize the importance of having a, a fostering education. I don't mean that, that in a simple way that universities should be, have a blank checks written by, by uh, more, and more, more and more companies, but I do think that they can help build the case that we don't have the intellectual capital, the intellectual infrastructure yep. that we need to have a smooth ride as a country or a world in the next few decades, and that that's something that, that's important and that they should be a part of fostering. Whether that takes the shape of what IBM is doing with its Smarter Planet initiative or what many other companies like it are doing is, 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 is another question. I think, uh, you know, one thing that has to kind of be examined in the policy arena is the power of companies in Washington uh, to torque how things get done. And that, that I don't think is gonna change ever. You know, co capitalism is fundamentally rapacious and, and when the boards of companies are talking about their fiduciary responsibility, you know, I would love to think that they could redefine fiduciary responsibility to have a broader, uh, uh, Def, def, you know, literally have a broader definition, so it's not just about making more money. And that won't change until people, the, the, the populace more generally, has a broader sense of obligations and the ethical, um, the ethical uh, imperatives that come with where we're at as a species. So, so I don't think corporations are going to change. I do think they need to recognize intellectual uh, uh, infrastructure is not there and help make the case that that can be built out more. Yeah, actually, Andy's absolutely right. Uh, I would love to see corporations be a lot pushier about the failings of academia. Uh, it's very, very hard to get academics, particularly tenured academics, to understand how badly they're performing. And if corporations could help a glimmer of light enter into that medieval mindset, uh, they would <laughs> validate their existence. That said, um, I think with, with all due apologies to my colleagues. Um, <laughs> that said, I think corporations um, have an interesting relationship with society at this point. The, the idea that corporations should be responsible for sustainability uh, is an attractive one because they're so powerful and because they control much technology. The danger of it is that corporations um, once they become responsible for sustainability, are not very good at it. <laughs> I mean, if a corporation is bad at doing economics, they find out. That's what Chapter 11 is for. But if a corporation is bad at doing sustainability, then that's a much more difficult kind of challenge to hold them to. Having been on the corporate side, there's an additional challenge that comes up. It sounds as if corporations should be able to respond to sustainability. The problem is everybody's got a different idea of sustainability. When I was at AT&T, we were dealing with a, with a German rating uh, organization for sustainability purposes, and we were doing great until they found out that we provided service to the American military. And then they rated us as a don't buy because we were assisting uh, the American military. Now, not only did this ignore uh, sort of views which might have taken a different perspective, 
uh, but it made it very difficult to follow this line, this line, and this line. There's the idea that everybody agrees with what sustainability is. That's a very useful fiction. It helps us all get along. We don't scream at each other, but the fact is we don't. And as a corporation, when you're getting hit with questions about do you do this, do you do that, do you do this, it's very hard to know whose agenda you should privilege. And particularly if you're a big corporation, because if you privilege somebody's agenda, you're swinging a lot of weight. Is that your role in society? Should you really, for example, swing a lot of weight towards an anti-military campaign by a German NGO? Is that your job as an American corporation? So it's not as easy as it, as it sounds superficially. This presentation is brought to you by Arizona State University's Julianne Wrigley Global Institute of Sustainability for educational and non-commercial use only.